Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know my name. It's Plus, and we're getting right down to this mayhem. We're kicking it off with Finn Balor as he has some important information to share with the WWE Universe now. I want to let everybody know that this was completely, you know, caught everybody by surprise. Balor was not scheduled to be out here, here tonight. And it was announced earlier today on the community page over on the Plus channel. And um, it was revealed that Balor has some information to address the WWE Universe with here tonight. So I can only imagine what that is after the last episode of Universe Mode. It ended off with a, uh, a pretty, pretty crazy ending. Finn Balor, John Moxley going at it completely i mean it's just completely insane the judgment day were a little late to the call which a lot of people are not the happiest with and you can't you can't really blame them judgment day just said how they were a united faction they just said how they were all for one and one for all and balor ended up being on the receiving end of being by himself last week as john moxley took down dominic mysterio and listen that was dominic's own fault but it all started because of this man the entire Judgment Day is hyped up and they are fueled up the way they are because of this man. And you can't blame them as this is the man that brought the Judgment Day to be just a little bit of a year ago today. Bringing the Judgment Day, bringing Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley, later on grabbing Dominic Mysterio and JD McDonough. The things that Finn Balor has done for the careers that are in the Judgment Day is amazing. So you can only think that the Judgment Day would have his back, which is why it's so confusing why they weren't here last week. You know, if I can be honest for a second, I don't know how to put this in the words. I don't know how to put this into perspective. I don't even know how to say this. But for the last two years, in universe mode, I have been the best thing about this universe mode. I have been on the top of my game delivering. When people doubted me the most is when I delivered the best. And when people believed in me, I showed up and I showed out. But the bottom line is, I did everything in my power to avoid the situation that we are in right now. And the situation... The situation that we're in is that I'm injured. And I know this is not something that everybody wants to hear. I know I know how much this annoys the judgment day because I have been the guy to keep them up along with Rhea, along with Damien, along with JD McDonough. I have been the guy to show them the new way, the new lease of life and just Two weeks ago, the Judgment Day and I promised a new era here in Universe Mode, an era where the Judgment Day is on top, an era where the Judgment Day is dominating like never before, but that is something that I am going to have to put a pause on. But while I put a pause on that, I want to turn my attention to the man that made this even a thing, and that is the world's heavyweight champion, John Moxley. Any bit of respect that I had for you in the past, any bit of respect that I had for you as a human being outside of being a WWE superstar, it all goes down the drain because last week you swung at me with a chair and after you proved your point, you continued to do so. I was fine. The first time you attacked me, but it's when you kept going, when you felt like you had to prove a point, that's when I got injured. And because of that, when I return, I am going to make your life an absolute living hell with the Judgment Day. You thought you weren't safe before. Well, just imagine now. And trust me when I tell you, there is not a damn soul in that locker room, not management, not William Regal himself is going to be able to stop me because the people have seen what it's like for Finn Balor to be that demon and trust me when I tell you Moxley when I come back when I take your world championship from you it won't just be that world championship it will be your career because when I come back I am erasing John Moxley oh, oh man oh man you probably shouldn't have mentioned that name because the wild thing is coming out for you ladies and gentlemen the world's heavyweight champion, it is John 
Moxley, well, wow! Finn Balor telling the entire world for the first time in his career he has suffered an injury by the hands of the lunatic himself. Moxley coming to stare down Finn, oh my god! Coming to stare down Finn Balor and he is wasting absolutely no time, look at this! Oh my god, Moxley, come on, the man just said he's injured! The man just said he's gonna be out for a few months, what are you doing? Moxley wasting absolutely no time, but surely this is, this cannot repeat last week. Where the hell is the Judgment Day? And, oh my god, oh! Moxley, come on! Come the hell on! Oh no, 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 please not like this. Moxley calling up Balor, he's going top rope, high risk, high reward, and oh my god! Axe from the top, Moxley not only making sure he takes out Finn Balor, but make sure he erases Balor as Balor now, trying to fight back against the Lunatic Fringe, but Moxley says no and brings him right into the barricade. Man oh man, Moxley fired up here tonight and he's not playing any games. As Moxley says, let's bring this, let's bring this in the chaos and Balor, Balor follow up, pursue Balor's injured, he shouldn't be fighting, but he's doing so here tonight. Look at this! Balor fighting back and oh! Another kick there by Balor! Moxley grabbing him up there by the leg! Beautiful work by Moxley as Moxley now! Oh man! Balor though able to catch himself before he goes flying into that barricade and all for nothing! Moxley laying down Finn Balor! We're trying to get the best crowd cuts that we can get for you guys here as we did not expect this one to break down and still the question remains where the hell is the judgment day is oh! Balor! Balor and Moxley going into the crowd. What the hell is this? Oh, another headbutt there by Moxley. Oh, this is this is insane. And oh, Moxley and Balor continuing to go on. Trying to line this one early on for no oh, Blair Davenport. Can Davenport be the one out of many to kick out of a riptide? And that's not the case here tonight. Rhea Ripley. Making quick work of Blair Davenport. Uh, I just got here. What are you talking about? Where the hell is that son of a bitch? I know. Let's go make sure Finn's good. And I'm going to get my hands on him before the night's over. Nobody disrespects the Judgment Day like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the general manager of Friday Night Mayhem, Wade Barrett. And although Mayhem is all about the chaos, and I love and live for the chaos in professional wrestling. Tonight, we have to keep things under structure, so I apologize for what went down earlier tonight. Moxley is banned from the building, so whatever Judgment Day is plotting, get it out of your heads because it's not going down tonight. No, tonight, we have much more to get into. Tonight, we see two Goliaths go at it when Sheamus goes one-on-one -on -one with Dijak for an opportunity to go to Unforgiven as Dijak put his championship opportunity on the line. And we already have to figure out how we're going to keep those two men away from each other all throughout the night. We also have a new rising team here, Universe Mode and AOP, as they are going to be stepping up against a veteran team in the new day of the final qualifiers match. And the winner of this match will go to Unforgiven and join DIY as we are looking to crown new Mayhem Tag Team Champions. And also, coming up, Later tonight, it is going to be an official, exclusive interview, live interview, from Brian Danielson. And we're going to be streaming from the rehab center that he is currently at right now as he is getting better to make his in-ring return right here to Friday Night Mayhem. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I apologize for the disruption in the beginning of the show. Let's waste no time. Now let's get right into it. Coming up next is a match that determines our future. Coming up next, the qualifiers match. AOP versus The New Day. 
so much to say about a great tag team like the two of you, but DIY is heart and soul. DIY, you see, is what makes mayhem mayhem. So I'm going to give you guys a little spoiler on what's going to happen no matter who goes to Unforgiven. DIY is going to use all the momentum, all the crowd reaction. We're going to use all the love from the WWE Universe, and we are going to beat you because that is the DIY way. Tell him, Johnny. Tell him. Well, all right, all right. Listen, like, like Champa said, we've done this since day one. DIY has been a thing. I tried venturing off and doing my own thing in the singles realm, but this is where I'm happy. This is where my career is at its best, and it's standing beside my best friend, my brother, Tommaso Ciampa. This is a man who will bail me out of any situation, and I'll do the damn thing, same thing for him. You see, when it comes down to DIY, we are much more than a brotherhood. We're much more than a shield. We are much more than all that. We are heart and soul, and without heart and soul, professional wrestling wouldn't be at where it's at. Without heart and soul, the WWE wouldn't be in the position that it's in right now without heart and soul. Wrestle Plus wouldn't be standing 3,000 strong, but they stand that way because of each and every single one of you. So that's why, like Champa said, no matter who goes to Unforgiven, you're going to put on an absolute banger because you're going to be in the ring with DIY. But at the end of the day, at the end of the hour, all of our hard work, all of our sacrifice will not go down the drain. We are going to get the win that we should have gotten at WrestleMania. And we are going to do it in San Juan, Puerto Rico when we take those Mayhem Tag Team Championships and be the first ever Mayhem Tag Team Championships and be the champions that this brand can be proud to look at because we are D.I.Y. Well, as we are set to get into our Tag Team Qualifier match, I want to remind you guys that still to come later tonight, we are going to be seeing Brian Danielson as he will have an official injury update for us. But that's not all. The two newest additions to the Alpha Academy will be making their debut under the Alpha Academy name as the Creed Brothers go against Pretty Deadly and inside your main event with Dijak's North American Championship opportunity on the line. It's Dijak going one-on-one -on -one with the Great White himself, Sheamus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have been waiting for this one for the last two weeks as it is qualifiers action. And the winner of this one goes two on two with the winners of last week's qualifying match, DIY. And they are going to book their flights to San Juan, Puerto Rico as we are going to Unforgiven. Well, AOP, let me bring you back to how they became to be making their in-ring debut a couple of weeks ago here in Universe Mode. And what an emphatic debut it was at that as they went against the Street Profits. The Street Profits being a very profitable team, no pun intended, here in Universe Mode, a team that has brought us to the high levels that we have seen here in Universe Mode, a team that is no stranger to matches like these being qualifying matches. They have been in high-profile matches in the past. No team to be slept on by no means necessary, and AOP managed to run right through them in their first matchup. Now, take nothing away from the Street Profits. They put on a banger. But in the end, it was AOP to stand tall. And not only was it AOP to stand tall, but it was AOP to stand tall dominantly. AOP is just, they're monsters. And that's what's going to be so interesting about tonight. Because tonight, they're going against a team which in scale, in size, yes, they are larger than. But larger than life. I don't know. The New Day, they're very charismatic. We've seen them in the ring before. We've seen them do damage in the past. And we know they get down. And they go crazy as look at this, the Mayhem crowd getting fired up already. And you can't blame them because, ladies and gentlemen, right now it's looking like a new day. And a new day it is. As Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston leading the charge here tonight. Big E could not be with us here tonight as he is going on to a photo shoot, which next week uh, Chad Gable will be at as we are looking to get some new official renders for the new upping or for the new season here in 2K. 24 as those guys are out doing their thing 
that other New Day brothers carry out as they are looking to go to Unforgiven. I mean, imagine how Big E would be. Imagine how happy Big E would be for the New Day going to Unforgiven with the New Day because you can't think that he would miss a match like that if the New Day were able to walk away with a victory. I mean, listen, they're drafted to Mayhem. They're here regardless whether they win, lose, or draw here tonight. We're going to see more of the New Day. And I feel like that's very important because the New Day, aside from the fun and games, aside from the shenanigans, aside from the giggles, these guys are a very good tag team. Xavier Woods, personally, if you guys know me in real life, if you guys know me, um, you know, just outside of professional wrestling, one of my favorites, if not my favorite professional wrestler of all time. That is my personal. So if you ask me who I want to win this matchup, well, I'm saying the New Day. But I got to be biased or unbiased here tonight as we are looking at Razor started off against Xavier Woods here tonight. Well, here we go. This one's going to be very, very good. As so far, Razor and Akam have definitely done their big one here in Universe Mode. But Xavier Woods, a man of very few mess-ups. You see he's getting popped up there and brought down right on the knee there by Razor. Not playing any games with him here tonight. You can't blame him. As ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every single one of you guys for watching Friday Night Mayhem. As you guys have made this the destination for Universe Mode on Friday nights for the last three weeks in a row. Getting over a thousand views for each episode. It is absolutely amazing. And I wonder if we could do the same for this episode. As Look at that beautiful slam there just throwing him right across the ring i mean my god razor not playing any games here tonight and that's got to be one of the most dangerous things because last match in their debuting match akam started off the match and if you ask me that was good for aop as akam was a little bit of the slow brewer and razor came in with the heavy hitting razor in my opinion one of the more scarier ones out of aop as they both are very scary and look at that as aop with a double Back elbow there to Xavier Woods. Woods is definitely in trouble here. As I mentioned before, to start off this matchup, you know, something that is very obvious in this matchup is the size difference between all these gentlemen. Every single one of these guys, definitely the size uh, uh, shows in this one as AOP is obviously monsters. As look at that off of the corner buckle. Is that going to be enough? And no. Beautiful kick out there by Xavier Woods starting to feel that momentum here as low I might eat my words as Woods goes up and down. Up and down goes Xavier Woods and now tagging in Razor once again. You see what I'm talking about here, the consistent tags by AOP. One of my personal favorite things that you can possibly see in universe mode when tag team wrestlers are doing the tag team work, when they're working together like a team and getting the job done. That is the, those are the things you want to see as look at that now. As Razor is the legal man back in this, Xavier moving out of the way. Big kick up there by Xavier Woods trying to knock down the big man, but the big man's just too big to get knocked down. I mean, man, oh, man. And, oh, look at this now. Woods fighting back from down below, fighting back from within the corner. I mean, listen, the New Day, they've done it before. They fought back from those dangerous situations, but their problem is winning the big one. Tonight can be the difference maker as Xavier finally gets the tag in. They get the big man down off their feet. Xavier takes him down. Boom! And look at that, it's Kofi with an elbow drop and Xavier follows up with another elbow drop. Beautiful work there by the New Day as look at that. Akam worried about Razor! And Razor goes down with a trust fall from Kofi Kingston himself! I mean, come on, talk about turning up a match tenfold. The New Day know how to do it. And here tonight, they are showing that as the New Day are dominating on a completely different level that we have seen them at previously in the past. And you can't blame them. The tag team rankings are getting reworked, which means these qualifying matches, the regular matches that you see these individuals in, these matches matter. And look at that now, beautiful tag there as Akam now, legal man in the ring. Akam hasn't been getting more of the brunt of the attacks in this one. So Akam's going to have a little more life left in his tank when it comes down to this match and look at that as Akam takes him down there now turning his attention to Xavier Woods Woods in trouble in trouble is Woods and yes he is his all goes down there and now Kofi gonna have to find a way to get back in this one as this has been mostly AOP this entire matchup and now look at this now oh man off the turnbuckle my god you know, I feel like I use this analogy a lot of times in stepping into this new era, universe mode. I hate to repeat myself, but dominance is being shown on display by the authors of pain as the New Day now trying to turn this one around. Kofi didn't get all of it, but he got just enough. Just enough to get Akam off his feet. Just enough to keep him wobbling and to get the New Day back to where the New Day need to be. And that is playing a little bit of offense. And oh my God. Man, big boot there by Akam into the cover. Is this one going to be it? No. Akam 
getting a little pissed off, getting a little agitated as he's gonna wanna make sure he keeps his composure in this matchup as, oh man, look at that now. Has that lock locked in and I thought he wasn't going anywhere but Xavier Woods finding a way to get out of it. Beautiful work there and oh, neck breaker there by Woods. Woods with a neck breaker absolutely shocking the WWE Universe into the cover now. This has gotta be it here tonight and no. Once again, Akam being able to kick out. Once again, the authors of pain showing that they are just, they are more than muscle. They have that endurance. They have that wherewithal to survive in an ongoing matchup, especially one with longer endurance. Bear clawing him, chest down. And look at this as he tags in Razor. We're gonna have to go on commercial break. We'll be right back. Well, this one's gonna be good, ladies and gentlemen, as Ilya Dragunov is gonna be making his in-ring return for the first time since season one, the mayhem after Unforgiven. It's gonna be damn, damn good. We're hyping up Dragunov because he is one of Mayhem's hottest, newest, freshest, roughest signings. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from commercial break as the New Day took this one over from Razor, and now Xavier Woods lining up Razor for what could be the beginning of his end into the cover. This one's gotta be in it, no! Razor staying in it, looking to take his team to Unforgiven. I feel like that is a very appropriate chant for what we are getting here tonight in Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, talk about a match for you here tonight to open us up here on Mayhem as it has been one insane episode of Mayhem. I mean, I guess the, the word of the show is the only way to describe how it's been going so far. It has been nothing but a complete and utter mayhem here tonight. Things have been kind of all over the place, but we are looking to kind of surround ourselves and go back in and get right back into the in-ring competition. As look at this now, Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston just got the authors of pain at a level where I don't think we've seen them before, and that's both men. Looking up at the sky, and oh man, look at that. As Razor still the legal man in the ring with Kofi Kingston. Beautiful Irish whip there, big boop there by Razor. Not playing any games with Kofi. And showing off that boss level position. I mean, talk about not playing any games here tonight. As Kofi Kingston now getting the life squeezed out of him. With a, just one foot of Razor that shows you the dominance. It shows you the level of confidence that the authors of pain are at. Holy shit. One, two, no, wow, what? Kofi staying alive after that mean lariat. A lariat that absolutely took the head off of Kofi Kingston. And although he survived the lariat, he's not surviving the last chapter. One, two, three. Wow. Well, if there's one thing that the authors of pain proved here tonight. That is without a shadow of a doubt. They are taking in the booze. And that is without a shadow of a doubt. They will be the ones to go two on two with DIY May 12th at Unforgiven. I, I feel like people didn't come here to see me waste my time and talk about how rehab's going. People came here to see exactly what I'm going to do when I return to the in-ring action because I don't know if you noticed, but a certain phenomenal one is on this brand too. And I don't know if he's looking for me, but I know for sure that I'm looking for, oh! The world's been waiting for it, and we can finally give it to them. The newest additions of Alpha Academy. Finally, you guys are going to be stepping up to the plate, and it all starts tonight with Pretty Deadly. I don't want to hear any words from you tonight. I just want to see action. Everything that we have been building towards, it's been leading to this moment right here. Gable, he is doing Alpha Academy good by being North American champion, but imagine what we can do if you guys were the future Mayhem Tag Team Champions. Well, that road starts tonight.
Well, as Alpha Academy's fired up and they're ready to go, this is the matchup that's going down. And I'm not going to sit here and say up next as we're ready to get this one started right now. It is two on two action. Creed Brothers, pretty deadly. It's going down right freaking now. We want to waste no time as the tag team action has been all in here tonight. The crowd has been chanting tag team wrestling for damn good reason. So let's get in to some tag team wrestling. Pretty deadly making their... Uh, making their entrance here as they are as confident and as cocky as ever pretty deadly making their debut a few months ago here in universe mode and uh listen since then it has been nothing but pretty deadly no pun intended like pretty deadly has been one of the most interesting tag teams that we have seen here in universe mode they have been one of the most charismatic when it comes down to pretty deadly they just know what they're doing whatever this is it's working and they're getting over fast pretty deadly has been one of the fastest teams on the rise here in universe mode and before we uh you know demolish the old tag team championship rankings so you know put as we are putting together a new one now with the series of tag team matches that are being put on display uh, Pretty Deadly was actually in the number 7 ranking weekly working on themselves here on Mayhem. Pretty Deadly is one of those odd teams who didn't really get to make much of a name for themselves on Raw and use Mayhem as a way to get their name out there. Now with Mayhem being an uh, A show, I would argue, alongside Raw, they, I would say that Pretty Deadly has a chance to make themselves be on the, the, the great name, the great focus that Mayhem is trying to push itself to be. Mayhem has a chance to be on the forefront of that as we are going to be crowning new tag team champions pretty soon here in Universe Mode as we now know it is going to be DIY versus the Authors of Pain in San Juan, Puerto Rico, May 12th at Unforgiven. That's that's going to be fun. But ladies and gentlemen, it is pretty deadly. And this is this is going to be interesting as they are going to be going against a team that has been here and here in Universe Mode, but not quite in this way I would argue pretty deadly in the ring ready to go and ready to wrestle that is exactly how we like them here in universe mode as now that's what we were waiting for big pop by the Alpha Academy well ladies and gentlemen the Alpha Academy here this is a new Alpha Academy as Chad Gable is still a part of the Alpha Academy name but Otis has gotten a little bit of time to step away from Chad Gable as Gable is looking to do his own thing in the singles. Still representing Alpha Academy, still doing them justice. Still around if they need him to be. But overall, Gable is focused on Unforgiven. He's focused on Dijak or Sheamus, whoever walks away in the main event of tonight's show. So truth be told, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, what matters more than anything here tonight is Chad Gable. Gable needs to see how the Creed Brothers do here tonight. We know the Creed Brothers are a damn good tag team. We've seen them do it in the past. Big question is, how good are they going to be under the name Alpha Academy? As yes, same team, new name, but new expectations come with that. And with those expectations come pressure. Big question is, can Alpha Academy handle the grind here tonight? And look at this now as Kit Wilson starting off hot and heavy here. To Julius Creed, Creed taking him down with a beautiful neck, or excuse me, leg drag there as Julius Creed, uh, you know, Julius Creed and Brutus Creed fit the exact mold of the Alpha Academy, that technical background of wrestling, and it was kind of a given that they would join forces with them at some point, as look at this now, Julius Creed picking up Kit Wilson, dropping him down his last time, we've seen pretty deadly in action here in Universe Mode, it was against the Judgment Day on the draft episode as Judgment Day did defeat Pretty Deadly, so Pretty Deadly did take their second loss here in Universe Mode. Definitely not trying to go for a third here tonight with the Creed Brothers, another team who has also gets a ton of hype. And every time they, they wrestle, they deliver in each matchup, but in the end, it's kind of hard for them to win those in the end matches as they did uh, de decent in the Starcade Tag Team Tournament. Yes, losing the round one matchup, but again, a team that really turned up you know they they really went crazy as the Creed brothers went against kevin owens and cody rhodes in the round one of the starcade then christmas edition of raws they went against john moxley and brian danielson look at that brutus creed looked like excuse me creed looked like he wanted to roll and run at maybe through the ropes there as he was gonna go to kit wilson but this time met him inside of off a of belly to belly beautiful work there by brutus creed as you see julius creed fired up there here tonight and otis looking uh looking proud of the Alpha Academy here tonight as the Creed Brothers. Oh man, bomb there by Brutus. Brutus dropping him down there with another senton, just throwing all his weight. And Brutus is the heavier one out of Julius and, and Brutus. You know, the Creed Brothers, Julius, 
is, is the more lighter guy when it comes down to so at least this, the in-ring wrestling. Brutus is a beast when stepping into the ring, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Kit Wilson's able to come off after two sentons like that. And oh, a suplex dropping him down. Vertical base making it look good. Man, oh man, oh man. And into the cover. Is this one going to be it here? No. Kick out there by two. Kick out at two. Man, oh man. What a match we're seeing here tonight. As look at this now. Kit Wilson looking to go back into the ring. Kit Wilson hasn't got the tag yet. As oh, Brutus Cree looking to turn it around on him. And like I was saying, Kit Wilson not yet being able to get a tag here to Elton Prince. Definitely a much needed tag as Elton Prince has been the guy to really win all the matches for for Pretty Deadly in their ongoing weeks. And as I say that, look at, oh my God, look at that. Straight dominance being shown on display here tonight. And oh, Brutus Cree just tossing his entire body through. And when I say through, I mean through. Elton Prince, and oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at this now, it's Kit Wilson. Wilson, oh, clubbing down on the back of the neck there on Brutus Creed. That might have been the exact thing he needed. His tag team partner getting a beat down might have been the thing that Kit Wilson needed to turn this one around, as this is the first time we're seeing any bit of offense here tonight from Pretty Deadly, as it was all Creed Brothers here tonight, as Alpha Academy starting off their new, their new season here in Universe Mode Hot and Heavy. Otis is yet to grace the ring with his presence. First time we're seeing the Creed Brothers in action. We've seen Gable do his thing here in Universe Mode as he is our North American champion. And look at this now as Elton Prince finally in the ring here tonight is looking to bring Brutus right into the corner and gets him off of a uh, beautiful elbow dropping, or excuse me, elbow strike into the corner. There is, oh man, oh man, Brutus. Brutus tagged in Julius. Julius is hot and heavy and no. Corkscrew uppercut by Elton Prince. Prince is, oh, big leg drop there. I said it before and I'll say it again. Prince has been the one to turn the trajectory in the favor of Pretty Deadly in the past. Wanted to do it earlier or earlier, wasn't able to do so. Now being the legal man, he has a little bit more leeway as he's turning up here tonight and he's making Julius Creed pay. Look at this, keeping the tags fresh. Tagging in Kit Wilson once again. And Kit Wilson might be the bad luck charm as, oh, Brutus cheering on as Julius knocking down Kit Wilson. Wilson's down, Wilson's out. This is not looking good for him as, look at this now. Oh, man, oh, man, dropping him down. Julius Creed is a monster, dude. I mean, he's not as big as Brutus, but he is still huge, dude. Elbow drop off the back of the neck by Julius Creed. Creed Brothers doing some dastardly things here tonight to walk away with the victory, and you can't blame them, as in a lot of ways, this is their debut. At least under a new regime is old. New era here in Universe Mode. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching this video. If you have, like and subscribe for more content on the channel, because more content is definitely coming you guys' way as we are 3,000 strong here on the YouTube channel. But what does Julius Creed have in mind? Uh, standing moonsault by Julius, and oh, Elton Prince wanted to take... Absolutely no chances with that one, and I don't know if I can blame him. And look at this now, Julius Creed lining him up after Brutus took him to the outside. The outside! Look at this! Kiss in the fist! Lights out! Wilson! One! Two! This is dangerous! This is dangerous as dangerous come! Alpha Academy! on a completely new level here tonight as Otis cheers along and celebrates with the Alpha Academy. What a victory here tonight. Brutus, Julius, Otis, much deserved win by the Alpha Academy as we, ladies and gentlemen, are looking to get right into the action as, oh wait, I'm getting breaking news here. We have a bit of an update for you guys as next week's show in our main event, we can now confirm it'll be Ricochet stepping into the ring as he goes one-on-one -on -one with the world's heavyweight champion John Moxley and that goes down next week Friday night on Mayhem in your main event but to focus on this main event it goes down not later tonight but right now it's Sheamus it's Dijak will Dijak continue his legacy here in Universe Mode with a hot and heavy streak or will Sheamus take it off from him here tonight as he looks to take Dijak's opportunity will I can explain how all this went down or I can show you as we have the footage as this whole thing 
went down two weeks ago gauntlet match but I'm gonna take you to last week on how we got to this situation because we thought everything was squared away when it came down to Dijak and Sheamus but well we were wrong ladies and gentlemen let's take you back to how we got here you know after last week everybody has been asking me a lot of questions everybody's been asking me Dijak how do you feel after your big win Dijak how do you feel about being on the grand stage with all of these main event superstars I feel like the question that you should be asking everybody else is how they feel sharing a stage with the biggest and the baddest how they feel sharing a stage with a man who's not willing to wait to get to the top he's willing to take any opportunity that passes by him because trust and believe i'm not looking for handouts i am willing to earn it trust me i am but when i do get those chances to earn it like you've seen last week i take the long road the hard road the road that leads to bodies piling up so that leads me to Chad Gable because after earlier tonight I feel like I exterminated the problem known as the Celtic warrior Sheamus I eradicated that old man who still calls himself a great white so now it's time to turn my attention to Unforgiven a pay-per-view that will surely live up to its name uh oh man oh man oh man well it seems like Sheamus Sheamus ain't gonna let Dijak get any further. It seems like Dijak was, we was trying to forget about Sheamus and turn his attention to the North American champion, Chad Gable, the guy that he's going against at the Unforgiven pay-per-view. And well, it seems like Sheamus isn't done with them. Well, I, I, got, I keep saying seems like it's pretty obvious from earlier tonight from the backstage brawl that things are far from over between the Celtic warrior and the man himself. Dijak, this is personal. I don't know when it became personal and how it became personal, but this one. All right, all right, all right. Cut this the music. This personal. Cut the music. You think you're going to be able to just put your hands on me and I'm going to let you come out here straight jacket and all, cut a promo? It doesn't work like that. You are on the Celtic Warriors show, which means you play by my rules. I said draft night said said something very important and I'll say it again right here right now to your face I'm not going anywhere I am nobody's stepping stone you may have beat me last week but it was nothing more than a fluke give me another chance put that opportunity on the line again this time do it in a one on one do it in a match that you know you can't win Dijak put the opportunity on the line me and you one on one next week Listen, I don't make the matches around here, but if you get it, Wade Barrett to sign off on that, then I'll kick your ass again in the main event. As it is every week to say, ladies and gentlemen, I can officially say it's time for the main event. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you see this man, you know not only it's tonight, Mayhem. Not only is tonight the wrestling show, but it's fight night. Sheamus looks to gather an opportunity from Dijak. That all started a few weeks ago back at the gauntlet match to determine who would be the next contender for Chad Gable's North American Championship. Every superstar popping out of the woodworks here trying to gather themselves, trying to get an opportunity. At the North American Championship just shows you how important this championship is, not only to Chad Gable, but to each and every single member of that Mayhem locker room. Well, it was revealed next week's main event as it is going to be Ricochet going one-on-one -on -one with John Moxley as that one is going to be good. As next week, we are coming to you guys live right from Jacksonville, Florida. It's going to be a damn, damn good episode, but the focus in more on tonight. I said it before, I'll say it again. It's fight night as Sheamus has had a beef, a straight beef with this man right here his name is Dijak well listen a lot of people aren't a fan of this guy but that's because you just don't know him yet I'm personally a huge fan Dijak is one of the most dangerous superstars that this universe mode will ever see usually he ends his opponents with a feast your eyes that we've seen all over the world but since arriving here to mayhem he has been delivering high justice and tonight 
if that is in store for Sheamus, then man, oh man, tonight it is going to be interesting as we kept these two individuals away from the arena until the main event as they geared up the wrestle as, you know, we've seen what happened last week when we let them in the building early. They were brawling and then they came out to the ring and they shared some words. It was a lot. It, it, it was a lot going down, all right? But Sheamus and, and, and Dijak, they were able to be somewhat of... of quarantine today so that way we can get them in the main event tonight right now where it all counts Sheamus ready to go Dijak ready to go this one's gonna be a hard hitter it's gonna be damn damn good and let's waste no time as we're getting right into the main event here tonight if you haven't done so far make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more as we are now on the road to 4,000 subscribers right here on the YouTube channel and Dijak gets brought up and brought right back down. And look at this now as Sheamus showing off the strength of his own here tonight. As Sheamus said a couple of weeks ago, listen, when we were in the gauntlet match, there were a lot of tensions rising. A lot of mistakes were made. But tonight, I'm going into a singles match, a match that I have fully prepared for. And, well, that's been Sheamus' excuse that nobody could really prepare for Dijak. You know, you can go back and look at Sheamus' tapes. John Moxley, you can go back and look at those tapes. Ricochet's tapes. Dijak, there's very few because he's one of the newer guys here in Universe Mode. And that right there makes him one of the most dangerous. But as you see, Sheamus not allowing... Oh! Eat my words there as I was going to say not allowing uh, Dijak to do what he wanted to do here tonight. But Dijak looking like he wants to have his way with Sheamus. We're seeing two Goliaths. Behemoths go at each other here tonight in the main event we usually like to argue that this is a david versus goliath mentality when going and stepping into the wrestling ring but when it comes down to dijak and his recent amount of opponents it's been goliath versus goliath as we have been throwing the biggest and baddest at dijak and he has been uh well he's been executing and oh man look at this now as dijak oh stomp down right into the chest there is sheamus sheamus ever since wrestlemania turning his back on the brawling brutes he has been set on a mission to, to just show the WWE Universe that he is not washed, that he is not the one of those old superstars, and that he still hits as hard as they come. As Look at that now. Sheamus bringing the beat in the Dijak here tonight, but the same case can be made for Dijak as Dijak isn't playing any games with Sheamus. As old Sheamus stomping down on Dijak. Once again, looking to work on him here as, oh, man. Oh, I want to thank each and every single one of you for a sold out arena for the last three weeks we have been going with a thousand strong each and every single episode of mayhem since the draft it has been absolutely insane sold out crowds and nothing more nothing less and you can't gotta say we can't do it without each and every single one of you but i'd say those arenas won't be as sold out as they are without a man like dijack without a man like sheamus carrying the mayhem roster since the Mayhem roster has become its own fully fledged band, real brand, excuse me, being on the forefront of it. They have been doing what they have to do. And look at that now as Sheamus gets brought right into the corner there by Dijak. Dijak looking to clean up here, looking to turn it around the Celtic Warrior, but Sheamus saying no. The great white looking to fight back here tonight. Picks up Dijak and no. Dijak says no. And oh man, look at this now backstage. Chad Gable watching on as Gable is the North American champion here in Universe Mode. This is for an opportunity to face Gable at. The San Juan Puerto Rico event taking place May 12th here in Universe Mode is it's going to be a damn good event, but we need to figure out who Gable will be going against at this. That is where this opportunity is. Oh, that is where this main event has come to be. As I want to break it down for you guys, it's already Die Jack versus Chad Gable at Unforgiven, but Sheamus got under the skin of Die Jack, and that is where Die Jack. I don't know, maybe tonight he puts his foot in his mouth. The Dijak puts his opportunity on the line after already winning a gauntlet match. And this is where we see Sheamus and Dijak go at it. But Dijak said since him and Sheamus' first encounter that he was going to be a, a dangerous individual. He was here to wrestle against the biggest and the baddest. And you see now Dijak taunting in the face of Sheamus. Big slap to the chest there. But the veteran here, Sheamus, not allowing Dijak to do what he wants to do. Neither is Dijak to Sheamus. And oh man, big punch to the gut there by Sheamus. Knocking away on Dijak here tonight. Unloading any and everything he has for him. Right here on Friday Night Mayhem. What a main event. We are seeing a Sheamus now. Sheamus could be lining up for what could be the beginning of the absolute end and look at this now as Sheamus picks up Dijak Dijak not getting to his feet voluntarily but Sheamus doing the job for him running at him oh takes him down with a clothesline couldn't get the foot riding for the 
for the bro kick, but this might be it. This might be it. As look at this now, Sheamus. Sheamus calling Dijak on his feet. Both men getting tangled up as Dijak throwing himself at Sheamus. Any and everything he can do. Big axe handle. Dijak teetering here tonight. Dijak trying to understand where he's at and what's going on. Big slam there. That is what Dijak needed right then and there. He needed an opportunity to slow things down, to turn things into his own pace. And what is he going to do here as Dijak goes through? Over the ropes. The six foot something, 300 plus pounds. Dijak not playing any games here tonight. Looking to go high risk, high reward. Oh man, Sheamus is in trouble. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Sheamus up to his feet. Dijak telling him, are you not entertained? And uh, holy shit, what the hell? That's Ridge Holland, the man that Sheamus turned his back against. And Sheamus thinking to himself, he wants none of Holland. And now, Dijak, couple of slaps to the chest. Look at this, oh! Big elbow to the face, and now, high justice! Wow! 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 Ridge Holland returning to the WWE. We heard absolutely nothing of the Brawling Brutes during the draft. One more high! Justice! Is he going on forgiven? Can he do it again? Dijak beats Sheamus! Wow! Wow! What a main event! What a finish! As Ridge Holland talking some smack in the end of Sheamus there. As this crowd is completely off their feet for Dijak. In the beginning of this match, the big question that everybody wanted to know was, was the respect earned? When it comes down to Dijak and the WWE Universe, I think after tonight, there is no question in anybody's mind as this is an electric crowd to end mayhem here tonight. I want to thank each and every single one of you for stopping by. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe as Sheamus is and he's going up the crowd ramp. He wants none of Ridge Holland here tonight and you cannot blame him. Well, Ridge is Ridge sign here to Mayhem? Well, I guess we're going to find out as it is official, it is confirmed, and now we can really get into it. Dijak, Chad Gable, one-on-one, -on -one, and with no interruptions. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the other match card confirmed for your side over here on Friday nights. It is for the new league crown, Mayhem World Tag Team Championships, AOP DIY 2-on-2, -two -two. and next week in the main event, we will be seeing Ricochet go one-on-one -on -one with Jon Moxley. Can the world's heavyweight champion knock off the man who calls this his brand, Ricochet? Can the human highlight reel take some home as he beats the world's heavyweight champion? Find out next week.